Hey guys, this is Cheryl with Magical Melody, and I'm here with part two of my two-year surge reversary update. Um, if you're new to my channel, um, I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy on January 5th, 2017, which is a weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery, and my surgeon's name was Dr. William Steely. And I have my surgery at Tenova Healthcare. And my highest weight ever was 250.4 in day of surgery, 241.4. My lowest recorded weight ever was 135.5. And I'm currently 156 pounds. Um, so according to what I had in my records, I've put on like 20 pounds, um, which is kind of scary. But at my first prenatal appointment, I was 142 or 144. I can't remember exactly what weight I actually was. Um, I will ask them the next time I see my doctor, which won't be until the 22nd of February. So, uh, the appointment went fine. I had an appointment with maternal fetal medicine people down on, um, at Vanderbilt Friday because I am over the age of 35, being 38. Um, my pregnancy is uh, higher risk uh, due to age. Um, there tends to be other complications that someone younger um, may not have. So for me, um, at my age, it means that I could possibly end up having more issues with my pregnancy. Um, I had an anatomy ultrasound scan, which took a really long time. The scan itself took mm, what felt like more than an hour. Um, because it's where they go and they check everything. They check all the organs, they check the baby's limbs and everything, make sure there's no deformities, that there's no abnormalities, and whatnot. Um, he is as perfect as perfect can be. I mean, there is nothing more perfect than what he is right now. And he's in perfectly good condition, perfectly good health. Um, everything is completely fine with both me and with the baby. Um, his heartbeat was 156 beats per minute, and he has a very good, strong heartbeat too. You know how sometimes the Doppler um, at the doctor's office sounds like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh whenever you listen to the heartbeat? His heartbeat on their ultrasound scan, plus also um, last week at the doctor's on, on the 25th was boom, 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 boom. And it was a very powerful, very, very strong heartbeat. Um, <clears throat> They said that right now he weighs about a half a pound. Um, and yes, confirmatively, he is a boy, which I found out at first that he was a boy when I was about 11 weeks pregnant. I ordered the sneak peek gender test, um, which is fairly new. I've never heard of it before. And uh, it didn't exist whenever I was pregnant with my other girls. And my youngest is nine years old. Um, so I, I was like, yeah, I'll try it, you know, but I wasn't really 100% sold that it was going to be absolutely accurate. So I did find, excuse me, I did find um, some people on Facebook Marketplace who had some boys clothes for sale and I was going to go buy those. I said, no, wait, wait a minute, let me make double sure that this is a boy that I'm carrying first before I go buy a bunch of clothes. So, um, yeah, first off, I'd like to say I'm not at all okay with the fact that I'm gaining weight. I have struggled my entire life with being obese, being overweight, never being the person that I thought that I should be, never having the body that I thought that I should have. Then when I finally accomplished that, 
I end up pregnant. And it's always happened that way for me before. Every time I will lose weight, something in my life will come up and cause me to regain. And I'm obviously at a point right now where I'm gaining and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, and I feel like since I have had bariatric surgery that I'm constantly hungry like, I feel like I am feeding this never-ending hunger that is never going to go away. I cannot get enough to eat. I can't get enough to drink. I'm always stuffing something in my face. Always. And I try and make sure that it's as healthy as it possibly can be. I try and make sure that um, it, you know, this within, you know, the um, higher carbohydrates and higher calories that I'm supposed to have, but it's not like the absolute worst thing in the world. And I try to still go for high protein since with bariatric surgery, it's you know, protein first. Um, but I'm like gaining all this weight. So I'm pretty upset. And I did look um, at the day that I recorded the 135.5 and like how I said in my last video um, part one of the series how um, I thought that it was within days that I found out that I was 135 that I found out that I was pregnant it was it was a it was within a matter of days so October 24th was when I recorded 135.5 and then literally like maybe six days later I found out that I was pregnant um, and I immediately started to gain back and like I said before I don't know because my set point um, is actually somewhere between 140 and 145 because I maintain 140 and 145 all all throughout the spring and summer like I stayed in that range for a very very long time um, and my body was very very comfortable there and then all of a sudden in October I just dropped like five more pounds and I don't, I don't even really know how that happened because I was at the hospital with my daughter so now I'm stuck with this 135 pre-pregnancy weight stuck in my head so it's kind of messing with me emotionally a little bit with this weight gain with this pregnancy um, so yeah everything with him is perfectly fine but what they did tell me is that i have a placenta previa which basically means that your placenta is over your cervix and they told me well um you're still pretty early in pregnancy so it's probably gonna move like as your pregnancy progresses it's probably gonna move upward and then you'll be able to deliver the baby normally. Um, but we wanted to let you know so that if nothing does change to expect uh, a cesarean section. Um, and then they turned and said, well, with, with yours, it's pretty iffy on whether there's going to be any changes with it or not. So I got told three different things. I got told was there. And then I got told, yeah, but it's probably going to change. And then I got told, yeah, but it's pretty iffy. <laughs> so my stepdad is a child of a gynecologist. Like his dad was a uh, gynecologist and uh, he grew up in the medical industry and um, knows a lot about that stuff. So I called him up and I said, okay, they, here's the three things that I was told about this situation. What can I expect here? What should what do I have to look forward to? And he just basically said, <clears throat> it, your placenta may or may, may or may not move upward. Because first off, it depends on how low it is to begin with. It, it depends on its position. If the baby's laying up on top of it or anything like that, it's probably not gonna go anywhere. Also, it depends on how well it's attached um if it's if it's attached there and it's really hanging on pretty good it's, it's not going to go anywhere um 
So they put me on pelvic rest. And for those of you who may not know what that is, is no sex, nothing that causes vaginal or uterus contractions, like no sex, no orgasm, no nothing, until they clear me from this issue, which is gonna be, well, they're gonna check it in four weeks. So it's either four weeks or however long it is before they clear me that I'm not allowed any anything sexual and um my stepdad basically said well heavy lifting also did they give you like any lifting limits and i said no it's just usual 25 pounds that they give you with all pregnancies he said i would go just to be on the safe side no more than 10 or 15 pounds because when you lift heavier things it engages those pelvic muscles if your placenta is low enough, depending on its position or whatnot, your placenta can dislodge. If your placenta dislodges, forget it, you're on bed rest between now and the moment that you have that baby. So be super careful just to be on the safe side and don't lift anything if you can avoid it. Just to be extra cautious and you know extra careful um, and you know, he just basically said that, I mean, because ultimately the other thing that can end up happening is, uh, premature, <clears throat> premature birth. So, I mean, I think I'm probably fine. The baby's very, very active in there. Like last night I couldn't even sleep because like I woke up and I was really hot. Then I couldn't get back to sleep because he kept kicking me. Um, he reminds me a lot of when I was pregnant with my daughter, Michelle, my younger, one of my younger daughters. She's like my middle child. And she was real active like that. She would wait until I'm like dead asleep and, and, and start kicking me. And she would like boom, 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 all night long. Like, <laughs> I lost a lot of sleep when I was pregnant with her. Um, so yeah, I mean, but it's pretty cool. I mean, he's, he's really, really healthy. I mean, I'm really happy with how this is going and they don't think that you know there's any issues um they did do some genetic testing um which was to test for trisomy 13 trisomy 18 and trisomy 21 plus uh x and y chromosomes um my my middle daughter was born with triple x syndrome which basically just means that she has three X chromosomes in her DNA where she should just have two. Um, and I was explaining to the geneticist how back then, whenever they did the test, they thought that my trisomy 21 was um, abnormal. And so they thought she had Down syndrome. And I said, look, I don't even think that she's at all at risk of having Down syndrome. Uh, don't worry about it. I mean, if it is, there's nothing I can do about it anyway. You know, because the doctor ran the test twice. He was going to keep on going. I was like, you know what? Can you change it? Can you do anything about it? What's the point in running any more tests? We'll just run tests whenever she's born. So the uh, NICU, not the NICU doctor, the uh, neonatal pediatrician um, ran a whole bunch of tests on her. Because she said, you know, I was really, really alarmed whenever she was born and she has cataracts. And cataracts usually link up to a whole bunch of other things, which in my case, they don't. Uh, all of my children have been born with cataracts because it's a genetic mutation. It's just something that has been passed down in my family from generation to generation. It's just an inherited thing. Um, so she wrote a bunch of those. And that's how she found the uh, triple X. Uh, as far as I know, Michelle's the only one who has it. Um, there's genetic testing done on my other kids and they don't. So you know so this one is supposed to check for that plus also the trisomy um all the other ones and the geneticist told me she's well i'm not worried about you at this point having any of that other stuff going on because your baby is as perfect as he could possibly be like there's absolutely nothing wrong with him and if you had trisomy 13 18 or 21 there would already already be some abnormalities there would be some physical deformities and some issues and there are none absolutely zero 
So I have a couple of really short videos that the uh, technician helped me take of what was on the screen. I'll show those in just a minute. And then I was really lucky enough to have a sweet technician this time because I have like all these pictures. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Like this one here is of his hand. Um, and here's another really good one right there. You're just gonna see. And then um, here's one of the ones that says blue for boy. You can see kind of like his boy parts. And here are his feet. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. Um, because I was gonna do like a slideshow, you know, of all these pictures, cause I was gonna cut them and then, you know, scan them with my phone and do like a decent slideshow and whatnot, but I can't find any scissors. Um, so I couldn't do it that way. And then the other reason why I'm late on this video is because um, I was trying to do like a body shot on camera of my belly and I wasn't happy with how that kept coming up like, um, there wasn't enough lighting. Um, and then where I was on Friday when I did it, there was too much sunlight coming through the window. It was just like washing everything out. So I wasn't happy with it. And I was like, well, I'm trying to get my ducks in a row so that this video doesn't suck. So um, just real quick here, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a body shot and then I'm gonna show you those um, short little videos that I have toward the end and then that will be the end of this video and I'll be back for part three. Okay guys, so here is my 18 weeks pregnant um, body shot, the first one that I've ever done on camera. So here is what I look like in the front. I don't really think yet that you can actually see it that much in the front because I just haven't gotten that big yet. Um, so, and then this is like a side view. And then side. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not really huge. So you can't really see it in the front, but you see it like if I go like that and then like pull my pants um, down a little bit. There's a lot of loose skin down here on the bottom, which I guess toward the end that'll fill out. I don't know. So we'll see. Um, and then I am in maternity pants. Not that I really have to be at this point. I'm still, you know, what doesn't make any sense is, um, even though the scale says 156, I'm trying to figure out where all the weight is going because I bought a size large in these pants. But you can see they're actually very big. And I have some more um, maternity pants upstairs that are size mediums. And they're actually a little big on me too. And I keep uh, having to pull them up. So I think that the weight all must be going to my belly <laughs> and maybe my boobs because I did gain two cup sizes um, in my breasts, which I'm thankful for that because they went down to like a B cup and I ended up with like these things that looked like there was some wet sand at the bottom of a long sock. I mean, I had nothing. So I'm, I'm kind of thankful for the cleavage, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really digging these, but you know, as soon as the baby comes, they're not going to be there anymore, which sucks, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So yeah, there's my body shot and this is Monday. So I'm like 18 weeks and three days. I think that's what it is. 
Well, any of you here have ever been pregnant before, probably know what this is. It just got in today, maternity pillow. Um, I have started to have some pretty bad back aches with this pregnancy. And I actually had back aches too with my uh, younger daughter, Michaela. And I wish that back then, Somebody would have told me that they made these because I definitely would have had one. <laughs> I just thought I'd come here for fun and show you this big thing. I know my husband is probably not going to appreciate this at all, but you know, I'm pregnant. What can you say? <laughs> so here's what it looks like on the bed. Um, as you can see, it's pretty big. Um, there's my husband's side of the bed. It's, it doesn't look like that it's taking up any more room than what I would, per se, but we'll see. I just put like this pillow on top of it, and then there's another pillow up underneath of it. They didn't really give you a lot of pillow up here, so I don't even know um, that I'm gonna need that or not, but we'll see. little hand right there. Okay guys, um, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and um, I will see you on the next one, part three.